Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris Holmes. We're playing Starters Order 7 today. And we're taking a look at the breeding side of the game. This is the first in a little mini-series on breeding. Kind of my thoughts on it, how I approach it, how I keep track of horses, and how I put things together. I've had a few comments recently asking how I'm you know, getting such good horses so quickly or such consistently good horses or, you know, how am I filling up the transfer list without them disappearing from my YouTube game. So I wanted to break some of those points down and give a little bit of insight that I probably haven't done so much of during the, uh, during the game that I record. So I felt it'd be a good idea to get a breeding save underway. Now, this first video is going to be a little bit more sort of long form and a little bit more in depth than the rest of this series because I want to walk you through the entire process of setting up the game and my thoughts along each and every step of that process. So you have to bear with me slightly for that but um, as you can see we do have a current breeding save. I'm going to start by taking you into that so you can basically take a look at um, how things are a few seasons and you can see we're in season 14 whereas in our YouTube save we are in season 7. Now what that does mean is I go through this a lot quickly so season to season we're not actually racing we're not actually doing too much therefore we can skip through time. But up here of course we're looking to race we're looking to win the Kentucky Derby, Triple Crown, big races, earn money, stack wins, and keep things rolling along. So normally I find in these kind of saves, I, I hit some kind of wall, either performance-wise or lack of good horses to breed from or just inbreeding can be an issue in these saves. So it can be a little bit crazy sort of around season 8, 9, 10, somewhere around there. So we're approaching maybe the end of this save as well that we run our YouTube save on and we'll be able to see the game once again with some of these great horses we bred throughout this series and all my hidden breeding saves. We do have, now we're, we're currently working on the fourth transfer file. We have three lots of 60 and we have one I believe at 40. So we have about 200 of these horses ready to come into a game here or there. So we're going to see how that goes. So I think, take a quick look at this 14 years of game that we have already built. There's one horse. This is mainly used for skipping time. We'll get around to that uh, in a moment. You'll always have the save on the 1st of January and you'll normally have a lot more breeding mares than you will breeding studs. So yeah, a comma halo we've actually already bred from and they are still on the transfer list. Now this is a copy from earlier of the, um, of the YouTube series. We have used uh, a glitch to get ourselves a ton of money so that we never need to worry about money. We can just continue to breed forever. There's, there's many ways of doing this. There's betting. There's uh, transferring in a ton of horses every year and selling them for big money. There's so many different things you can really do. You can buy low, sell high. It's up to you. You can, you know, the ones that you don't make onto the breeding list, onto this transfer list here, as you can see, 41 on this fourth transfer list. Uh, the ones that don't make it there, we can always sell as well. And if you're breeding from a lot, like we have been, that's a good way to make money. It's kind of been a little bit of everything, but also a big glitch, which I found during betting, which is kind of game-breaking. I'm not going to share because um, I've actually lost the save doing it as well. So it's not entirely stable. Luckily, I backed up the save beforehand. This is just a copy of my main YouTube save a few years down the road. So you, you will see some of the same horses, I guess, along the way 
So you can also see the amount of money you're paying for some of these big, big horses here. When you get down in terms of uh, the timeline, you get down to like season 10 plus. They're breeding pretty high levels of uh, horses. So if you look at Safari Team, for example, there's so many good grade one winners. Um, sadly, though, you can see we did breed from Safari Team. And we pretty much did, I think, Greenway down to Mr. Redwood. Those were all our horses. None of those came back good. So while it seems to be a very, very good horse um, with game breads and winning grade ones, it just never worked out that way for us. And you will find that as well. So it's not always perfect. But there's a number of ways you can breed. Right now we're only down to two horses in the breeding barn. So what I would do here is find the horse I want to breed from. So something I haven't bred from before. Um, and then I'd breed both of them to it. Skip through the days. So, I'm just going to go quite random here. Let me see who else has got high group wins that I know I haven't bred from. Abu Harith, an absolute beast. Safari team, an absolute beast. Down the stretch. I, I don't think I've ever bred from, but at the same time, 18 scares me. Um, yeah, I have problems with older horses. Pick a look there, really good. So, we need to find something that's kind of young there's a low me which doesn't look very good okay so the AEIs they're a nice young ish horse I'm looking for like 6-7 at most really a low me is still there on the feed so Fred a lot why 13 grade 1 wins and you come from Wicked Days Blue Ivy. Okay. They're decent horses. So let's see if we wanted to see Sir Fred Lot. I would simply breed. Skip seven days. And as long as it took first time, it would be seven days. Otherwise, it's 13. I don't know what the second is more. You can see now we're in full. But we still need to go one more day to clear the breeding. And then I put Weedle in with Sir Fredlot. Same way we do it for the other one. Um, same way we do it for the YouTube save. Where we just basically go through. As soon as I see in full. I'm here on this screen. Last possible race to book. Skip the next day. And this is what we do. We skip through the entire year. If we know there's five horses that I want to breed from that are in the barn right now this year, I will do this five times. And we will get to the end of the year. And then I just remove from race the day before and we set up again. Skip the next. We just keep doing this. So what I would do is I'd get to the end of the year, to the 30th. And because this is a modded game where... The schedule goes past November 26th, I believe it is. You basically get some horses that don't turn into yearlings. They turn into two-year-olds. That's because somewhere between November 26th and December 30th, usually around, I'd say, the 10th to the 20th of December, they automatically get foals. So technically, they're yearlings in the same season they were bred and that means they enter the game when they should be yearlings as a two-year-old so you would stop on december 30th i'm, I'm going to show you that i'm going to get there but we we get to december 30th we check the yearlings see who's been fold early if they're good transfer them to the the transfer list if not we just delete them we don't need the money before i would have sold them geld all the mails only sell the meals, but sell them all so they can't be bred from. And that will allow the game to generate more and more horses. 
and not use the ones you know aren't good enough and up to your standard to actually breed with or from. So that's one way of doing it. The females, I would still transfer out. I would just simply retire from game. But the ones that did make it and I liked would be retired to game pool. This horse here is usually just something really cheap in an auction. This was actually one of my horses that I, I bred together at one point, sold, and was able to buy back in an auction. So it's kind of gone all over the place. But it almost made the cut, didn't quite, you can see how close it is to kind of my standard, uh, which we'll again go over in a little bit. But yeah, we... um. We got them back. But usually that's just something cheap in the first auction I see. So I can sell my initial five horses, make maximum profit, spend 10, 20,000 of the 3 million or so, maybe more that we get initially from selling horses. Um, spend 20,000 of that to actually buy the time skip horse. You want basically a three year old or a four year old. Because that will last so long into the future. Uh, if you do get a two-year-old, of course, there's not going to be many races. So you probably have to simulate a few more time skips as uh, you go through. But that's not that much of a problem. Uh, on the same thought as well, if you do sell your initial horses for three million, then you transfer in 16 uh, unraced two-year-olds or yearlings if you skip the first year. You can do that. You can get your, your two-year-olds in. You can sell all those for about two million a piece normally, and then you're sitting somewhere around forty million, thirty-five to forty million, for you to actually just go crazy and bet. And it doesn't take long to get up into the hundreds. You can get up to like a hundred, two hundred million pretty easily when you've got forty million to stake. It's it's laborious. It's it's time wasting. You've got to go through and check races. You've got to see who wins by over three lengths. I've done a video on the um, the ways to make money. And every way apart from the glitch way is in there that I know of. So there's a few different ways of doing things. Uh, I kind of explained and laid out a little bit there that you can kind of take advantage of. Whichever way you want to make money in your game. Like I say, for this one, we went a number of different ways. But you can see how you can get the 40 million... And then the betting strategy, you can easily get up to about, I'd say, 100, 120 without really worrying. At that stage, it's pretty quick, pretty easy to do that within a season easily. You can triple your money. And then buying and selling yearlings and two-year-olds, only buy the males, geld them, sell them back. Um, you know, buy the yearlings. Uh, geld them, sell them the next season as a two-year-old, and you will double or triple your money in a lot of cases. And it's not a huge amount of money unless you hit every single auction out there. Um, but yeah, it's it's twofold strategy of making money while removing horses. You do not feel good enough from the breeding pool of the save itself. So that's kind of uh, the way I think about that and do that you can get plenty of money so you don't need to worry about it you can just now while you're breeding here if you wanted to do it another way you could just see okay there's a breeders auction 14th of october so instead of just going all the way to the end here i'm going to go a little early i'm just going to go before that breeding auction we're going to skip time as usual we're going to get there and we're going to check out that breeders auction and see if anything interesting falls our way. If so, we add them to the breeders list. Uh, if not, we just continue on as normal. So I know this is a two-year-old auction. If I know these horses and I like these horses, I might take a risk here. There's a ton of two-year-olds here that we might be able to do something with, but I don't like doing that. There you go, you got Fatina, Pity she's 12, Betty Solutions 10. The Russian Rose comes out of Patricia's Pride, and again, now we can start looking here and see. This is a stallion that has, that has actually bred quite well. 
That's a, that's that's not bad. And then you look at the mayor and you see nothing. But now we've got money again. It becomes no issue whatsoever just to throw some money at it, get the horse, and see what you've got. Which, in this case, wasn't much. It wasn't much. But if we just continue on skipping the way we are, that is currently in our breeding barn. We'll deal with that later on. But at no point have I saved, at no point do I want to, because we want to return to the beginning of the year once this is done. Um, and not everybody does it this way, I don't think, but... It's a way I found of doing it. So we're already up to the 22nd of December now on this skip. So what was that, five minutes? You, you've seen the entire process. I've explained some. I've taken time out. Normally I can get it done within five minutes for a season. Uh, the horse is absolutely wrecked. It probably won't allow me to do anything. So I'm going to do these final days by hand. And this brings up another point. You want to check every auction. Just skip every day, it takes a bit longer. We've got Ashva there, who is a three-year-old. You can see he's worth a lot of money. He's got a grade two under his belt. We didn't really check his breeding. I, I would check the lineage to see kind of where they come from. But we buy ourselves Ashva. And again, not great, but not bad. I, now, what I would usually do here is geld the horse and then put him back in an auction to make most of that money back, unless money's no longer an issue. And in fact, what we can do now is just throw Ali Royal into an auction instead. And there you go. We just made nearly half a million bringing him back. Yeah, that's not a bad deal. That's not a bad deal. And now we've got a three-year-old about to age up into a four-year-old. Now Ashba becomes our skipping horse. So that's perfectly fine with me. See, there was a yearling auction. You can go and buy those out if you're skipping day to day. And luckily for me, Friday the 30th is an auction day. Now, I'm always tempted to save here, but I don't. So now if I go into the breeding, you see none of these actually have any pulls. We bred from them, but they're already yearlings from Sir Fredlock. And I would go in and I'd say, yeah, actually, this one makes, this one actually makes the cut. So Sir Fredlock was a good, a good horse to go with, I guess. That one falls below the 50, I wouldn't bother bringing this in. What I'm looking for is 50 ability, 70 potential. I am looking for Decent confidence, enthusiasm, consistency. This is a touch low, but it, it's not game breaking. That's tertiary for me. This is primary. These three are tertiary. And my secondaries are cruising burst, extra speed, finish application. And battling qualities, which is rare. But if it's there, it's worth keeping. So Spring Glory just about fails and it looks kind of average even if it did hit the list it'd be one of the worst on there but it does have distance you can see the stamina bars full up as a filly here at one year old that's probably going to gain a lot of distance it's probably going to gain it quick it could be worth keeping for that reason but normally again we're just getting rid of them and then fiddler bay here you can see quick got decent breathing indication Everything looks okay. And when we look in here, again, low enthusiasm and confidence. That tends to happen in a lot of my breeding saves. But pretty decent everywhere. So I would name this um, Knight of the Weed. We've got Weedle and we've got Sir Fredlot. So the Sir is a Knight. Weedle, Weeds, Knight of the Weeds. There we go. And I go back and forth just to do that. Now what I would do is go and enter this in my transfer list. And for that, I'm going to have to drag across 
a little bit of a document here. Okay. So what you're seeing here is my little cheat sheet on what every horse I have and what every horse I know. So the YouTube safe with all the horses in, the ones I'm worried about in bold. I've got a stud list, very similar, where I can list names of the studs. This is the one I'm working on, transfer list number four. You can see here some of the best ones are highlighted with their, their stats that really show up and the total of all of these stats minus determine, uh, deterioration is the sum we put in. Very simple equation to make. But I can tell at a glance who's really good. So Down Alex looks like a very nice filly. It's got extra speed, bit of cruising burst. That's not bad either. That's not bad. But big ability potential could get that filled at two year old. That's impressive. That's impressive. Probably gonna end up being a mile or maybe a mile one. Um who knows there. And then we got that angel with big speed, great ability potential. Again, could fill that as a two year old. Doesn't have great extra speed, but some of our best horses have actually been missing that. Again, a little bit of cruising burst. But low confidence, low enthusiasm, and not quite as good an all-round horse as Down Alex there. So we can see kind of at a glance, we're looking at 50, 70. We're looking at 70 extra speed. We're looking at 100% finish and consistency. So we get too many not to really. And I can also tell now, like someone like Down Party here, you can see 75 confidence. 70 enthusiasm, 100% consistency. I shouldn't have to worry about this horse. We should get up to about 70 to 75 ability in terms of their two-year-old season. They've got good extra speed, not great. Good potential, which could be filled or surpassed in their three-year-old season. Likes a mile, might get more than that. Could be in that triple crown range. And a good total number of stats. So down party is pretty good. And these have come from Down Like That, which is why we've got Down Alex. That comes from a lexicon. Ski Party and Down Like That is Down Party. There's ways of telling who we've bred from. Apart from some where I've gone a little bit more interesting on the name. But yeah, you, you can see a lot of these horses. As I say, I've already got a lot of horses here. And there's more Down Like That horses in here, including Down Angel who again looks absolutely fantastic, apart from a extra speed that I don't like. Um, Dumb Sweet is a little bit better there, but lacks the ability. Over here, Comerigo, not bad speed, but great right here. Great right here. Not extra speed, not great enthusiasm, not great confidence, not great overall. We do have some absolute good ones here. That just happened to be towards the lower end of the ability and potential. Um, but that's our second transfer list of 60. Sorry, our third. This is our second. And this is our third. With names such as Bella, Fail is still in there. Shift is in there. Um, Copper, Ashendere. Zagato, Lurcher, yeah, Tyrion, Red Hand. These are the early horses on the list that some of these others came out of, like Bellamica, Higgy Forest, that you're now getting associated with. Takiana made it onto that list as a yearling before we saw her go crazy. Halliday Ski Party is in there. Um, and then we also got Takiana's Breeding actually comes on here as well for a few. Not too many because Takiana wasn't the best stud at all, sadly. But yeah, we've got all these kind of horses lined up. So we're filling out list number four. I'm going to go to 60 because I've had a problem with games eliminating more than that when I've done it. Other people have up to 200 or more on their list. Try it, see what works for you. Um, just add random horses, find your limit. Um, it might have been a glitch, might have been a mod, might have been something getting in the way. But right now, I know I've got 
what, 19, I think? 19 spots left on this list. I normally get more males than I get females. You can see here we've got 15 females. But we end up with 26 males. And that's kind of typical. We've got 19 here. Which means then we get 41 males on the third. We get 24 which is a bit of improvement, female on the second, and 20 on the first transfer list. So, yeah, you would, you might find the same as me where you get more males than females, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. There's a stud list, and when we find out, there is a way to find out, and I will be showing you that a little bit later on, um, but we're able to pen in what their actual stats are, and then, as I said, YouTube. So we're going to fill out a line in here. I'm going to fill one out. Uh, and I'll come back to you when it's all filled out. And you'll see kind of where we're from here. So Knight of the Weeds is going to get added. I'm just going to quickly pick that up. And I'm going to quickly pick that up. There we go. That's all the information I need. A little screen grab to here. So, Knight of the Weeds is going to be a male yearling. Normal disposition. Uh, speed's 100, 10% stamina. That usually means 5 or 6, so I normally put that in a 6. Breeding indicator, though, a mile to furlongs. And then we're just on to this one. So that then becomes 55 ability, 75 potential. I tend to round where possible uh, to the closest one. Uh, so only 15 confidence. That's really low. So 55, 75, 40, 30, 100, 100, 515. That's going to be really low on the total. It's going to be really low on the total. Um, that would get bolded because it's above 80. It's 85 or above. That nearly gets there, but just misses out. 60 is my total. 80 is my total, so just misses out there. 60 is the total, just misses out there. 80 is the total, just misses out there. So even though it doesn't look amazing, it's still, you know, it's still okay. And then I look at 55 to 75 to 550. So it's going to slot right under Coma Storm in my list. So... The potential first, then I saw by ability, then I saw by total, and just see. So Knight of the Weeds is an okay prospect, nothing more than that. Quite low down on this list, would probably be fairly low down. 55, 75, 515. So yeah, would come under Wee Warrior just ahead of Higgy Da. Um, you can see it is quite low down probably would be on every single one of them sadly so there we go and then i would simply retire to the game pool and now at the bottom here we've got knight of the week so pretty interesting um one other thing to keep an eye on though is how horses kind of are bred in game without your input so you, you can see here when we check these indexes you can see who the best races are for example you can see doc reason was an absolute beast and cost an absolute fortune they've got a couple of horses that they've bred well from as well safari team that's a horse that's done really well on the track and has done very well off the track and now sir fred lot who was a good racer, decent lineage, but didn't really do much, but seemed to be a very good one to actually take on, because one came close, and one actually, like, made it to the transfer list. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. So if you, if you look at that kind of thing, as how good a racer they are, 
Then you look at the AEI, you look at the fee being charged, you look at the average earnings, the percentage of stake winners. So something like South Stack, if they were younger, I'd be interested there. 22 stake winners at an 84% rate. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, you can see how many group wins their progeny have actually got. And again, you can go down this list and you could say, for example, here, that someone like Monsoon, decent runner, top three normally, five grade one wins. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Two grade ones give us Aguas. Pair that with another grade one Dubai print, which is a big money winner. That's a horse I really did like. And that gives you Monsoon, who is another very good horse and has foaled two grade one two-year-olds. Urgent request looks okay. Bit hit and miss, but looks okay. Sustainability. Sustainability looks like an absolute beast. And then you can check the dam. Stolen Glance, again, has another grade one, but sustainability is the best. Comes from down the stretch, which is a horse I think could be really, really good. So I, I now start to look at Monsoon, maybe, as being a very, very good horse. So if I were to save and quit, at the end of the year, we haven't saved since the beginning. I load the backup. I go straight back in. And I'm at the start of the year. I don't need to worry about the breeding pool getting older. I don't need to worry about anything crazy kind of happening along the way. All I know is I have a, a, a chance here maybe with another good horse. So can I find where they are? If not, I'll, I'll normally go into here. Where are they? Monsu. So I can now just quickly breed. And we're still in that same season and then the same process happens. Skip seven days. Yep. Yeah. It's bred just fine. Make sure you get the right horse. Put it in. And it's quite quick for me to do this this way, but um Yeah, that's just gonna continue to go till it breeds. So unless it fails unbelievable amount of times. 27, 28 times we're going to be within the breeding window. I think even more than that. Yeah, technically it'd be even more than that. It'd be 48, 49 before we hit the breeding window end. And sometimes it'll give you a race in that. Um, and sometimes it just allows you to go in. So you can book. So it'll put you to the end of the window anyway. You can select a race, book it, and then go back and take the first one out. Slightly quicker to do it this way. Um, so I'm going to come towards the uh, the end of the year. We're going to take a look at this breeding, and I'm going to show you the trick to find out other horses that you don't own, kind of what stats they might have. And I'll be back with you for that. Okay, so uh, towards the end of the season, we can only get up to the 25th by skipping does mean that we could go in for a yearling auction if we wanted to, um, but I normally don't. I do normally check the Friday auction. Now again, because we bred early to those horses, and it's normally the first, I'd say, three to four weeks that are normally most at risk of falling early. If you didn't breed before... I'd say if you started your breeding in March and you bred to the same horse, you're looking at about a week each time and you had 30 horses, you'd still be within the window for breeding. You wouldn't miss out on any horses probably. So, and you wouldn't fall any early. So that's another way of doing it. But again, we're back to looking here. Monsoon with Weedle. Looks pretty good to me. Over 80 extra speed. We'll gain more cruising boost. We'll gain more potential, but already in a very good spot. 
So monsoon weasel would be what? Um, a bug typhoon. I don't know. That's what I'm going to call it. That's where it's going on the list. And then monsoon and calm angel. Slightly more boring, but again, still good enough. So apparently monsoon is good enough. And we're going to actually find out. So, uh, let's see. Heaven's wrath. A monsoon sent down by the angels. How about that? So we've got our two horses. And again, I'm going to go and put those onto the transfer list. And we're going to be putting them into... Uh, into our little files here so they will join in these rows and then I'll make sure I color code them for the sex of the horse and then rank them amongst their peers so that will be happening but what if we wanted to look at how good monsoon is you can't tell he comes from Dubai Prince Stormbrig Mystery Cool was a decent mare. We've got Aguas with Shakalaka Boom Boom. We know is a great one. And Knightsbridge Red was another one. But we can't tell. We can only tell their, their lineage and their offspring in a lot of cases. So if you're in the easy game mode, which I am, and there's reasons I'll go over in the next video for that. And that, that will be the actual full setup. This is more of a how things work when you're in and i think this is a way to start off yours because you can apply this sort of methodology to any save so as long as you're not in a league save if you've enabled league mode this will not work if you are not on easy mode i think it does work but easy mode is more predictable breeding if you're doing an actual breeding save you're likely just to go to easy to get the better horses that way so don't enable league mode and make sure that you go through and you leave it on easy so what you want to do is find your horse click on the horse stat we know what ours look like now if you open up for example come angels you still owe us this button would still be there you'd still be able to see it. But this is what Com Angel looked like. But through something in the game, we can actually go and look at Monsoon. And that's what Monsoon looks like. So now we know Monsoon, and this is brand new to me, but we know Monsoon has a full finish and consistency, 85 extra speed, and a pretty decent potential at 75. Normally, I'd look for 80 potential, 80 extra speed. He's there or thereabouts. He might be kind of degrading slightly at 7. I don't know. Maybe he's not as good. We can also look at Dubai Prince, who's at 11, looks like this. And if they're still in the game, Stormbreak. But Stormbreak has expired. Mystery Cool. We can tell that she, at 18, is a really poor mare. At one point, she must have been okay, because Stormbreak bred with her to give us this. And if this is the average, she must have been good, but getting old does cause problems, apparently. <laughs> That's just the way it is. We can look at Aguas, and again, not great, but coming out of Shack like a boom boom, who's expired, Nightbridge bred has expired. But we can tell where these horses have come from. And how good they might be. So I can tell Monsoon is good. Now one way of doing something with that. Is when you have more mares. Let's say you've gone and bought a ton of mares. You've got like 20 to 30 in. You can pick 20 or 30 different horses. Breed them all in that first week. Get to the end of the year. To the 30th. If you're on a modded schedule like me. They'll all be here in the yearlings. If not cycle round, uh, your season would probably end on November 26th in that case. Cycle round one more day, skip, skip, get to the first and see all of them listed out. And then simply go in 
check the size, note this, that, and then build a list. And then repeat the year time after time, like I've shown you with the save and quit and backup features. And you will be able to breed from every single one that you want. And you can do that five or six times. You can get the entire breeding pool of game bred studs. You can check every single one if you wanted to. And spend all that time going through all of them, figuring out which ones you like, breeding from them, applying them to a transfer list. It's as depth as you want to make it. It's as in-depth as you want to make it. Now, Monsoon's decent. That's fine. I'm actually going to kill this save game after this point, so it's not a big deal. But, um, yeah. It's nice that the two that I've chosen for this this video have actually turned out to be pretty decent as well. So we got um, we got Sir something. Sir, oh, that's going to, Sir Flot Lum. Let's go look. Let's go look. It's going to annoy me if I don't get this right. Sir Fred Lot. I knew there was a lot something in there. Sir something. Um, and Monsoon. So they turned out to be pretty good for different reasons. But yeah. Um, okay, they've been added to the list. They're no longer here. Of course, Coma Halo has returned because we loaded up the start of the year. Um, but yeah, we've added them to our list. We have put them on to the transfers. You can see them both down there. They don't rate that highly either up on the list. Um, like I said, this is one where we've had a lot of mares and we're slowly sort of coming down now. Come Angel, one of the last ones we actually have bred from. Uh, it doesn't look amazing at five. And Weedle still looks good. Pretty good at 11, but not amazing. Yeah, every other mare that we've had has fallen off. So what I'm actually going to do is save the game. And then I am going to trash that game. Because I think we've done everything we wanted to there. 14 seasons and we've bred with pretty much all the good game breads. There doesn't seem to be too many like really good horses currently running that would get into the breeding barn and would become good breeders so it's time to start over and that will be episode two uh which will deal with when you have good horses actually on your transfer list and that will allow you to seed uh not only a racing save but an actual breeding save really really well and we will show you that we'll get on to that um, in episode 2, so I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you very much for sticking with us. Come back soon for more in this breeding series. I hope it's a help. Hope it allows you to see some of my process. Take what you like, take what you, uh, you know, think will be useful to you in your games and apply it. And then toss the rest. Modify it, do what you want. It's your game, play it your way. That's my kind of thought process on this. But I like opening the curtain up, letting you see my thoughts, how I do things. I have been told that it's interesting and it's helpful to some people. Um, so let me know in the comment section down below. How clear was that? Was there anything you felt you wanted to know more about that I skipped over? Um, maybe it's coming in a later video or maybe I just forgot to put something in. So let me know what you thought there. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Get all that done. And in episode two, I'll show you how I set up a save and how I see that save. And again, it'll be a pretty lengthy one. I thought this might go a little longer, but I forgot we only had a couple of breeders in this save left. So the next one's going to be longer. It's going to be a full setup and it's going to be importing, you know, a ton of fillies that we can actually go crazy on. So we'll see how we uh, we come together on that one. But I'll see you there. Until such times, take care, behave, stay safe, and I will see you very soon. Thank you very much for the support. I hope you enjoy the new series.